Today we're talking about some of the underlying medical conditions that can lead to hair loss. And with us on the channel, we have Dr. Ajay Chaudhary, who is the Chief of Endocrinology at the University of Buffalo, a member of the Royal College of Physicians UK, and a fellow of the American College of Endocrinology. Dr. Chaudhary, it is such a great honor and a privilege to have you on the channel. Thank you so much for being with us. It's a pleasure being here, Michelle. Today we're discussing hormones and the underlying medical conditions that contribute to hair loss. Dr. Chaudhary, could you speak a little to the nutritional deficiencies and its role in hair loss? Yeah, so just like anything else, nutrition is very important to maintain healthy hair. And uh, one of the common conditions that can lead to hair loss is a deficiency in iron which is something that we usually look for when people are referred to us to find out if there are any medical conditions for hair loss. Some of the symptoms that you might notice if there is iron deficiency is that you could feel tired. Apart from hair loss, you might also notice that the nails are becoming brittle or uh, sometimes there is some spoon shape of the nails also. Um, and especially if there is um, heavy menstrual bleeding, then that is something that you definitely want to rule out as one of the causes of hair loss. Thank you so much, Dr. Chaudhary. Could you also talk to us about stress and uh, the effect that it has on hair loss? So as far as stress is concerned, um, from the hormones point of view, uh, cortisol is one of uh, the hormones that tends to go up when we have any kind of stress, whether it be mental stress or um, some other medical conditions. And when you have stress, um, there is a hormone called corticotropin releasing hormone that is secreted by a gland in our brain called the hypothalamus, which then acts upon another gland in our uh, brain called the pituitary that releases another hormone called ACTH. And then that acts on a gland called the adrenal gland that sits just on top of our kidneys to release cortisol. And that's usually a normal response to stress. Uh, um, and usually cortisol levels are higher in the morning and lower in the evening. But if you have stress, then it could be high all through the day. And then that could also cause um, problems as far as hair is concerned. Thank you so much, Dr. Chaudhary. And could you tell us a little bit about thyroid and its connection with hair loss? Now, this is very important because um, from the hormones point of view, you need to have normal thyroid functions to maintain good hair. And one of the common conditions related to the thyroid that leads to hair loss is when the thyroid is not producing enough hormone and the um, symptoms that you might experience when that happens is that you might start feeling cold, you might start gaining weight uh, even though you are not eating more than usual and you're exercising. There might be a change in your bowel habits so you might notice that you're getting constipation, uh, your skin might start becoming dry, uh, you might start feeling more sleepy than usual and also you might notice that you are having some difficulty in thinking um, and this is a common condition uh, that we diagnose as endocrinologists now also you can have an overactive thyroid when you're producing an excessive amount of thyroid hormone and the symptoms of an overactive thyroid are totally opposite to what I had described about when you have an underactive thyroid, which means that you now start feeling more hot than usual. You might notice that your heart is racing. You might notice that you are sweating a lot more than before. Uh, you might notice that your hands are shaking. Uh, you might get diarrhea and you might also lose weight without intending to lose weight. And so it is very important that both these conditions are ruled out as a cause of hair loss 
Um, and as, as I mentioned, this is something that is very, very uh, commonly diagnosed you know, by an endocrinologist. And Dr. Chaudhary, can you tell us a little bit about the diagnostic criteria or the tests that are used to rule out thyroid conditions? Actually, quite simple. And uh, the important thing is to meet with uh, a physician and they can order a blood test. And we generally call it as thyroid function tests, which includes uh, the measurement of two hormones. One is called TSH and the other is called T4. And usually when you have an underactive thyroid, your T4 levels are going to be low and your TSH levels are going to be high. And when you have an overactive thyroid, it's the opposite. That is your T4 levels are high and your TSH levels are low because there is kind of a yin yang phenomena that occurs uh, where the TSH is produced by the brain and that controls the production of your thyroid hormone. So if the thyroid hormone is low, then the TSH goes up because your brain is trying to make your thyroid make more hormones. And if your T4 levels are high, then your brain is trying to tell the thyroid, you know, to shut down. So that is the reason why you have this combination of tests for an underactive or an overactive thyroid. When you have a thyroid condition, now thyroid condition you, uh, for metabolism, meaning for proper functioning of any organ in the body, thyroid has to be in the normal range. So if you have an underactive thyroid, the metabolism tends to slow down. And if metabolism slows down, then you can see how that can affect the growth of hair. And if you have an overactive thyroid, your metabolism actually revs up and that you can see how if there is hyperactivity that is going on how that could lead to more hair loss um, because thyroid is very very important for proper functioning of any organ in the body thank you so much dr chaudhary and dr chaudhary can you tell us a little bit about pcos again this is a very important condition that we need to make sure is ruled out as a reason for hair loss. And uh, PCOS uh, is the abbreviation for a syndrome called polycystic ovarian syndrome. And the reason why uh, this is important is because the ovaries produce not only estrogen, but they also produce a small amount of male hormones, that is testosterone. So both women and men produce both estrogen and testosterone. Clearly women produce more estrogen, less testosterone. Men produce more testosterone, less estrogen. And in the condition called PCOS, the ovaries are producing a little more testosterone than what is produced normally. And you can see how that could then lead to some hair loss as far as the scalp is concerned, but also lead to some hair growth in the parts of the body that you don't want hair to grow. Um, and so it's a PCOS is a very, very important condition that needs to be ruled out. Now, if there is PCOS, there is usually also some menstrual irregularities. So usually uh, you might notice that your periods are becoming more scanty or you're not having periods in a regular fashion. Apart from noticing, noticing some hair loss from the scalp, you might notice hair, uh, you know, in other parts of your body. And you might also notice that you're getting acne. Um, and so when you have this, you know, when, when in, in the history, if people are coming to me and they are talking about hair loss, but they also say that they are having some hair in other parts of the body or they have menstrual irregularities, or that they are also developing acne, then that is one of the conditions that I think about, um, you know, that we need to make sure that PCOS is ruled out. Thank you so much, Dr. Chaudhary. And also, Doctor, the prevalence of PCOS has really gone up these days. Could you, since we have a female demographic watching the channel, could you tell us a little bit more about PCOS and insulin resistance? 
Again, I think this is a very important uh, connection that you have made because in women who have PCOS, they are also um, resistant to the effect of a hormone called insulin. Now, the importance of the hormone called insulin is that, as you know, that insulin is responsible for regulating blood sugar. So insulin is a hormone that basically unlocks the channels that then through which glucose enters different parts of your body. And if you're resistant to insulin, that channel becomes uh, rusty. So now you can see that if the channel becomes rusty, how that can then lead to higher blood sugar circulating in the blood, which then leads to eventually leads to diabetes. Now, once you have insulin resistance, what happens is that the body tries to compensate by increasing the levels of insulin in the blood, because Basically, you can think about it, if you have a lock and you're having difficulty opening it, you're going to put some more power into turning that key. So that means now your insulin levels in the body will try and go up to try and maintain blood sugars in the normal range. And these high insulin levels then can also lead to an increase in the release of more testosterone from the ovaries. And at the same time, they also reduce what we call binding proteins, meaning that any hormone that the body produces circulates around in the blood and some of it is bound and some of it is free. And if you reduce the carrier of these hormones in the blood, which can happen when insulin levels are high, there is a, a protein called sex hormone binding globulin that goes down then that can lead to an increased amount of free testosterone that circulates around. And if you have an increased amount of free testosterone, you can see how that can lead to increased hair loss from the scalp, plus an increase in hair in other parts of the body, and also lead to acne. Thank you so much, doctor. This has been like a wealth of knowledge that you shared with us today. What is the most important message that you can share with us for anyone who is facing hair loss? Again, this is, I think, an extremely important point that I want to make, that clearly hair loss is concerning to most of the people who are having this condition. And I think it is very important to make sure that you don't have any of some of these medical conditions that I just mentioned because you want to make sure that you have ruled out these causes for hair loss before you think about hair loss as being something that is familial uh, or hereditary or related to genetics and also before you start thinking about that is it any other uh, is it that something that you are using you know that could be you know leading to hair loss because you clearly don't want to miss a cause that is easily treatable but can be very severe if it is not diagnosed in time and that i think is the most important message that i would like to share you know with your audience michelle thank you so much doctor in fact the message of not self-diagnosing is so important in today's day and age i i totally agree with you michelle um you know i i we, we get a lot of referrals um, you know, to identify what could be the cause of hair loss. And uh, like I said, um, um, you know, sometimes I see people who come to, uh, in whom a condition has been diagnosed pretty late, um, you know, in the, uh, in, in, in the natural history, you know, of the disease. So, uh, but I, at the same time, I also understand that uh, when people are having hair loss, it is, it, is, it is concerning and uh, you are looking for some fast solutions uh, but that may not always be you know, right you know, for, for you. Absolutely, doctor. In fact, uh, it also takes a toll on you emotionally and on your mental health because sometimes it can be so traumatic to go through hair loss. I agree with you. I'll again emphasize, just, just make sure that you have ruled out some of these, you know, all the causes that I've just mentioned. Uh, because, you know, the important thing is that you also want to be 
um, uh, that you want to make sure that um, you know your health is taken care of um, while you're trying to figure out what could be the reason you know for the loss of hair uh, one of the things that we did not mention was clearly stress does play a role in it and um, sometimes life does come in the way uh, um, that but you know you have to try your best to try and deal with that stress Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you for sharing with us. In fact, thank you so much for being on the channel today and gracing us with your presence. It has been an absolute honor. Thank you, Michelle, for inviting me. And I enjoyed the conversation that we had. And I hope uh, everybody has uh, got the message to make sure that um, some of these medical conditions are ruled out uh, if somebody is experiencing um, hair loss. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. It was a pleasure being on your channel, Michelle. And uh, I wish uh, you and your audience uh, all the best. Thank you. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video and gained value. And if you're interested in hair care, feel free to check out these videos.